Hi everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Quest XI. Uh, so, last part, um, Eric was uh, kidnapped along with the people who had been turned into god statues uh, and taken to the Viking, or the old Viking hideout, where these monsters, uh, gold kind of skeletons are now residing. Uh, we defeated them and we saved Eric, but he's kind of uh, ran off to this place. Where there's just a pile of gold on the floor. What the fuck's going on here? Uh, so let's find out what the fuck's going on here, shall we? <laughs> um, so now we can touch the Yggdrasil route here. Which is, by the way, I think that's the reason why this place was kind of locked up. Uh, earlier on when we came to this place, like, um, earlier on in the game. <clears throat> Sorry, it's so that you didn't. we didn't give away... That this place was going to be uh, important later on in the game, you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, so with this, we finally get to see a little bit of Eric's backstory. So basically, uh, he was basically taken in. Him and his sister were basically taken in by the Vikings. Um, you know, he was left in the. Uh, they kind of found him in, like, what they describe as kind of a, a snowfield. And, uh, basically, he's kind of been... And they were kind of brought in to kind of work as kind of, um, basically... Lackeys for, um... For the, uh, for the Vikings, basically. And this is where we get to meet Eric's younger sister. I actually really like her design. She's got a rear, uh, Mia. Um, she definitely looks like a, uh, Eric's sibling, but she also has her own kind of unique, kind of, some unique flair. <clears throat> Sorry, unique flair to her design as well. Um, you know, which I kind of like. I kind of like that. You know, uh, they also, uh, we also get to see a bit of her personality here. She's kind of very outspoken and <laughs> kind of like a bratty younger sister. And she's like, oh shit, <laughs> I shouldn't have run my mouth. <laughs> yeah, severely really punished for that one. <laughs> Again, I kind of like that because it's kind of a little bit yeah. like, um, for the help, Mia. Oh, you know, because uh, Eric's got a bit of a wisecracking kind, kind of big mouth kind of attitude as well. So it's, again, kind of cool to see that she uh, oh, very, that you know, very much in step with her brother, so, which I kind of like. One of these days... We're gonna get our hands on a whole pile of treasure, and then we can wave this lousy place goodbye. So yeah, and uh, this is also a bit of uh, we kind of get to see. We get to see basically that he, the reason why he kind of went off and became a thief. His whole thing was wanting to have a better life with, you know, get a whole load of gold and be able to live a really good life. Um, with his younger sister. But some bad shit's about to go down. <clears throat> Sorry. There we go. Fly away from here. We could go wherever we wanted. What are you? Five? You won't be flying anywhere on an empty stomach. Know what I think when I look at that thing? Dinner. Yeah, so uh, and we also get to see that Mia has a bit of a She's got a bit of a streak in her, kind of like a bit of a brutal kind of streak, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so yeah, basically, so we found out a little bit about Eric and Mia, and so we need to press the uh, touch the Yggdrasil route again, because uh, Eric's starting to remember things, we just need a bit more info. Just need to get a m bit more info to him. Hey, you. Tough day? Huh? 
<laughs> oh, that's pretty. Just something I picked up on today's raid. No birthday's complete without a present, right? Happy yeah. birthday, sis. Huh? Is this the best you can do? A rusty old necklace? <laughs> yeah, she's a bit of a bitch here. <laughs> it's like Eric has gone out of his way to try and buy her, to get her a, uh, you know, a birthday present. And he, she's like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> I wanted the red orb of Heliodor. And he's kind of like, what the fuck, dude? I worked so hard for that shit and you just treat me like garbage. Yeah, she's a bit sundery <laughs> about it. She really likes it, though. Yeah, so she's still happy to have it because uh, Eric gave it to her. It's probably just talk, but it seemed about right for a little money grubber like you. <laughs> He's kind of mean to his little sister here. And yep, yeah, turns out that what Eric was saying was a hundred percent true. You put on the. Um, Where did you get that from? I don't know. It was a copper coin a minute ago. You put on the amulet. As soon as I touched you put it. the. Uh, sorry, you put the amulet around your neck, and basically anything you touch is turns to gold. This seems kind of a. Um, this doesn't seem very useful. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you get a load of gold out of it, but um, what are you supposed to do about eating? I wonder if you could use a fork. <laughs> you know, turn a fork golden and then use that to pick up your food and then eat it. Or would it, the act of sticking a fork into food mean that you're picking that up? So that turns into gold as well. <laughs> And of course she's super happy and excited and Eric's kind of like, oh shit, what the fuck. Which by the way, the fact that she went to the Red Orb of Heliodor, it kind of tells you, it's kind of interesting that that, that Eric, that's exact, that he, you know, he ended up um, stealing the Red Orb of Heliodor all the way back then. Uh, it's kind of interesting that he decided to get that. <laughs> kind of shows that he remembers what his little sister was always after uh, what she was excited to try and get hold of so yeah uh, it's kind of sweet <laughs> and yeah and Mia's still turning stuff into gold <laughs> You've been at it again huh <laughs> what's the matter Eric jealous of my treasures? Tell you what, if you yeah, and this is where we see that she really nice starts to go a little bit one. mad with power a bit. And uh, with greed. Let me see now. Um, ah, perfect. Yep. Huh? This is where it's a bit dark. <laughs> she basically turned... Did, did you? Basically yeah, turned a seagull right. into gold. Yeah, That's... I suppose it is a little small. I forget how greedy you are. Yeah, she's kind of going mad Seriously, a little bit with her greed here. This has to stop. Hey, there's no need to shout. And anyway, you're the one that gave me this thing. Yeah, Eric is not happy. <laughs> he doesn't want his sister to do to be turning out this way. Yeah, so she kind of recognizes at this point. Oh shit! I okay, did actually okay, turn a living it. thing into gold here. This is um, this is not good. I need to stop. <laughs> I need to stop like doing that, this now. <sighs> Take it off from around your neck. No, no, it's fine. I'll stop turning stuff into gold. For now. So, <laughs> I like that for now. <laughs> Little playful for now at the end. So she tries to take it off, and can you guess what's going to happen next? <laughs> Why won't it... So... What's wrong? Yeah, she's trying to remove it, but... The necklace. It, it won't, won't come, come off. off. 
Come on, Mia, stop fooling around. <laughs> I'm serious. I don't think I she is, Eric. <laughs> See, now that she tries to pull it off. What's oh. happening now? I didn't do anything, I swear. And yeah. Everything's starting to go wrong and yep. Don't move. Because she tried to remove it, uh, she's tried Yeah, because she tried to remove it, she's basically being turned into solid gold. And Eric tried to remove it, but basically the his dagger was turned into gold and then kind of disintegrated. I'm turning to gold. Help me. Mia, What's going to happen here? Damn it! What do I do? What do I do? Yeah, this is kind of, to be honest, this is kind of a dark uh, moment. This is a very dark moment in the, in the game, to be honest. Yeah. She just goes completely to gold. So, yeah. She's been turned completely to gold by the cursed amulet and yeah at this point Eric doesn't do isn't exactly he's upset but he doesn't exactly make the right decision here <laughs> Yeah, he's not happy. As you wouldn't be, I suppose. It's <laughs> he's definitely going to feel like it's, you know, uh, his fault. But yeah, basically Eric decides to run away. Decides to leave her here and kind of it was all my fault. run off into the world. After what happened, I ran away. I wanted to leave this so, place. yeah. Eric was a bit of an asshole and just decided to leave his sister here trapped in solid gold and just run away. So yeah, he did try and find out what was going on with it though. Found out there was a cursed relic. And but after he found that out, he basically just threw himself into his adventures and just wanted to forget. Just didn't want to look back at all. He told me to go after the so old. yes, he meets that he met the did, seer. I'd meet the luminary somewhere deep uh, And so he t that's where he, t that he was told him, about you know uh, if you go you, somewhere underground, you'll find the luminary, first, and if I you help him, then all will be forgiven. In, uh, so yeah, <laughs> he kind of took himself. that to mean that you know um, if he, he sure went enough. and found I the luminary, the he would be able to be forgiven and he maybe could find a way to um <clears throat> and maybe he could find a way to completely uh to completely heal his sister thanks so that's what he's been doing you know i guess you could argue it's kind of a, a, a selfish <laughs> thing that he's doing here just to you know uh, join up with us uh, basically for you know this rather selfish reason I guess to save his sister it was yeah but she's not there anymore so what's going on with that we'll soon find out so yeah I guess you could argue that it's a bit um, maybe he took her too you know I don't know maybe you could argue that maybe he's a bit uh, bit selfish what he's doing but you know at the same time he's just trying to save his sister at this point so yeah so now Eric has all of his memories back um, 
And it basically means that Eric at this point finally rejoins the pro party popular, popper, properly. Uh, he's finally back in the party proper. Uh, and he also has uh, all of his um, uh, uh, slots available again. So all of his abilities that you unlocked up, to, you unlocked up to up to that point are now all unlocked again. And you also have new ability points to um, unlock more abilities. So now Eric is fully in the party again. So we now have a couple of missions. We've got to head over to the oh Snowfield Styles. What do we get? We get Fenrir Fangs. Ice Claws and Avalanche Axes. Um, the the Claws and the uh, Ice Daggers are pretty good weapons for Eric. Uh, but the axes, the Avalanche Axe is actually not all that useful for Hendrik. Um, you've got stronger weapons at this point, so it's not really worth... I mean, if you want to make it, just make it, but, you know, it's not really all that useful at this point in the game. So, yeah. So, now we've got to head... So, we've got two things we've got to do. Uh, or two things to accomplish. We've got to head into the Golden Palace to defeat Gildiger, Um to rescue the people of Sniffleheim, and also to bring back Eric's sister and kind of help, uh, help change her back. Yeah, it kind of automatically shot me in here, but we aren't done with outside yet. <laughs> um, go to the uh, left of it, and we've got our next tockle. The green tockle here. Uh, with his next password. So yeah. Make sure to get that. <laughs> uh, and so yeah. We've got that. So now we can move on and head into the actual uh, castle itself. Which... Uh, again, is uh, time for us to head through another dungeon. <laughs> the Gildan Hall. Uh, in terms of the enemies that you'll face in here, a lot of them, um, we, uh, we've got a lot of new enemies to face in here. So we've got the, the gold soldiers here, which we've faced before. We've got gold golems, who are... I don't think they're any stronger than regular golems, actually. Um, but, you know, it's a different type of enemy, so I can't, uh, so that's just, you know, new type of enemy for, enemy for us to face. Will this open? No, oh, it's fucking budge. <sighs> fucking asshole. Uh, that's what's kind of annoying about this, uh, about this, um, about this particular dungeon, is that, uh, a lot of doors are locked, so you have to kind of um, work your way around to try and work out, okay, how do I get to the next kind of area, to the next floor? Uh, how do I get to open up all these dungeons and stuff like that? All these doors and stuff like that. Gold plated puppets. Uh, I'm trying to remember, I don't think these things are any stronger. I th no, I don't think they are. I think... Yeah, I don't think they actually hit any harder, and I don't think they're defensively any stronger. It's just, you know, a different um, colour of enemy, really. But yeah, Rab is actually pretty good in this place, because uh, all the gold enemies are, um, from what I remember, more susceptible to... Uh, darkness attacks like um, like uh, Zamel and stuff like that so kind of useful so Rab becomes really useful in this dungeon so yeah I every single time I do this dungeon I always find myself getting a little bit lost uh, but so yeah let's take on the gold golems just to see what these guys are capable of. I don't think, like I say, I don't think they're any stronger than regular golems, from what I remember. Um, 
I'm trying to remember. I think maybe they have physical attacks which hit slightly harder. Yeah, they hit slightly harder. But in t And defensively, they're pretty solid. But in terms of difficulty, they're not super hard. So, yeah, deal with them pretty comfortably. Also, the majority of them are just kind of on the floor. Uh, so you can kind of avoid them pretty easily just by not walking up on top of them and that kind of thing. So it's really not that hard. So, yeah, we don't need to fight these guys. Shit, it's locked. What am I doing? Head up. Uh, something else, uh, you actually get a lot of um, gold nuggets from... Def uh, there's a high chance of getting gold nuggets when you defeat enemies here. So yeah, I do like the names of these enemies. Uh, they're called uh, Penny Pinchers. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Wow, that's it. Yeah, those, the, the armor ha hammer is pretty uh, beefy. Uh, but in terms of the penny pinchers, defensively, I don't think they're all that strong. I th yeah, so, yeah, they have moves like that, which are kind of annoying. Which can drain your MP. They also have des desperation attacks, which do a lot of uh, damage as well. But like, you know, look at that. Two attacks and they're down for the most part. They're pretty easy. Um, you know, they're pretty easy to um, defeat. You know, their normal attacks don't do too much damage. It's just watching out for the desperation attacks and um, also try not to uh, just, you know, making sure you top up your health. And that's really it. Okay, so, yeah, we've got a chest to find. I think this has more a recipe. Yeah, guilt gear. Gold circlets. Um, gold circlets are pretty good. They boost your defense quite considerably. <clears throat> So, gold circlets are pretty useful. So, now we've unlocked that door. So, let's get this chest here. Where are we going here? A royal ruby. Uh, I think that's just for selling, from what I remember. Uh, so, basically... <clears throat> the quick way through this maze is, basically, you just have to work out... <coughs> oh, shit. Sorry about that. <laughs> <clears throat> Essentially, you just have to work out how to get to the um, the room on your right as you enter you first enter the uh, palace. So the, from the front entrance, there's like a square room directly on your right, which is locked when you uh, enter this building. And you basically just have to try and work out how to get to that set, to that area. Once you've made your way into that area, into that room, then the uh, the that entrance will take you up to oh we're in here actually uh, so you just need to go up to the very you just have to go upstairs because basically um, where you're trying to get to is the very top floor and this place is the only place where you can um, reach the very top of the the very top of the dungeon the very top floor of the dungeon. So basically, once you get here, then you're pretty much set, um, and you can get to the top of the dungeon to face the boss. Look at that fucking hell, man! Yeah, golems can hit pretty fucking hard, but he's dead now. So basically, that is an enemy that couldn't ride as well. It's actually really useful. Um, but I'll talk about that more next part. Join me next time for the next part of Dragon Quest XI when we will be reaching the top of the dungeon and we will be taking on um, Gildigger. So yeah, see you next time.